Hello and welcome to the channel Ecoholics. Today we are going to discuss the basic concepts related to interference curve analysis. Now interference curves was a concept given by Hicks and R.G.D. Allen. Uh, Hicks is J.R. Hicks, the Nobel laureate and of course R.G.D. Allen. So Hicks and Allen gave the concept of interference curve in the microeconomic theory analysis which says that it is an ordinal utility concept. Now let's take a brief moment over here and discuss a little about cardinal utility and ordinal utility. Right? So cardinal utility is when utility or the level of satisfaction for a consumer it is quantifiable. Right? It is quantifiable in terms of uh, in terms of money, in terms of some units, then it is called cardinal utility analysis. But here we are talking about indifference curve which is an ordinal concept. Ordinal utility analysis deals with the level of satisfaction got by got to a consumer or the level of uh, or the utility the consumer receives by consuming certain quantities of goods and that utility is not quantifiable which means that utilities only can be ranked or compared to each other. For example, if you want to purchase a particular commodity uh, like a purse or a bag, so you go to different shops and you will see the design, you will see the color of the bag, you will see the material if it's leather, if it's not leather, if it's like uh, some plastic coating. From, uh, from the zipper to everything, you will check the whole of the bag uh, in different shops and of course the price range. So these will be your parameters and how you will see um, the, uh, the comparability of the product which is the bag. Now uh, you can only compare one bag to the another uh, according to your level of satisfaction. For example, a particular color, a particular style, a particular material of the bag will give you more amount of satisfaction or less amount of satisfaction than the another type of bag which is in some another shop. So you can only compare over here the level of satisfaction or the utility that you are deriving by consuming that particular commodity and that is what the indifference curve analysis talks about ordinal concept the level of satisfaction being only compared or ranked right now let's move on to our main topic which is the indifference curve analysis all right now um, just let me take the dust and wipe it out so that's a little bit clear okay now here i have uh, made a schedule schedule as in the tabular form of combinations of various goods and there's a graph too. So let's first understand what is indifference curve. What does indifference curve show? Indifference curve would show the various combinations of two goods giving the consumer equal amount of satisfaction, that is equal amount of utility to a consumer. Now let's take an example of two goods, say A and B. All right, and here I have given the various combinations. Okay, let's just uh, erase the uh, graph over here for a certain time period, and let's focus on the schedule. Now, the schedule says that there are two goods, good A and good B. All right. Now, as per the combinations, the very first combination says that you can buy uh, from a given amount of money that you have. You can purchase 1 unit of good A and 12 units of good B. So when you have certain amount of money in your pocket and you go to the market, either, not either, you can, you can purchase 1 unit of good A and along with that you can purchase 12 units of good B. This is your first combination. Now let's check the second combination that is combination B. Now combination B says that if you want to purchase one extra unit of good A then you would have to sacrifice or give away four units of good B, right? So in order to purchase one more or additional unit of good A, you are sacrificing four units of good B. 
Likewise, let's come up to the combination C. Combination C says that again, when you have to purchase one additional unit of good A again, then you will have to sacrifice three units of good B. And likewise, we'll see that you uh, purchase additional unit of good A, you are sacrificing two units of good B, and finally, if you uh, add, uh, purchase additional unit of good A, then you sacrifice one another unit of good B. Now, from this example, you can see the chronology or the level of sacrifice that you're making is decreasing. Like first you sacrificed four units of B, then three, then two, and then one. Okay. Now just keep this example on hold. Just keep this schedule on hold. And let's discuss one very good example that I have in my mind right now. For example, you go to the market to purchase your two necessity vegetables, which is tomatoes and potatoes. Okay, so these two tomatoes and potatoes you want to buy and of course these are your basic necessity vegetables because you use these vegetables in your everyday meal, right? So, and because in recent times tomatoes are a little costlier, so given amount of money, you would purchase certain amount of tomatoes and certain amount of potatoes. I think that's clear. Now, given this example let's discuss tomatoes and potatoes now when you have you want to purchase more units of tomatoes you are willing to sacrifice some units of potatoes but again when you add up the additional units of tomatoes to your basket you are not willing to sacrifice the same amount of potatoes that you have sacrificed earlier so now for every additional unit of tomato, you will sacrifice potatoes lesser and lesser. Which means because, because of the necessity of both the items, you cannot totally sacrifice the amount of potatoes. So that is why you will get an optimum, optimum uh, you will get to an optimum point basically where you will sacrifice an enough amount of potatoes to purchase an additional unit of tomatoes. Right? So I think uh, with this example you can understand totally the schedule where for an additional unit of A commodity we are sacrificing gradually the commodities, uh, the uh, units of commodity B while we are gra gradually sacrificing the units of commodity B we are still having a diminishing rate on that sacrifi sacrifice. Now, this sacrifice can also be termed as substitution. Why? Because for every other sacrifice that we are making, we are substituting good A to it. So, every sacrifice of B is substituted by the additional unit of good A. So, this is actually the substitution. And over here, we arrive to a concept which is known as the marginal rate of substitution all right so let me quickly raise this and so that you can understand it a little clearly now let's make a ratio all right let's make a ratio of how you how how you can derive to the marginal rate of substitution or MRS. Okay, I'm introducing a new concept to interference curve analysis to you, and so that through this example, so that you understand side by side another property of interference curve also. Okay, so marginal rate of substitution is basically the rate of substitution which means the rate at which you are substituting one good for the another okay for here uh, for this example you are substituting good a to uh, your sacrifice of good b okay so over here you sacrificed four units for one additional unit of a 
Here you sacrifice three units for one additional unit of B A. Uh, two units sacrificed of B for one additional unit of A, and finally one is to one. So over here, the rate of marginal rate of substitution basically is falling or declining, which means you are lesser and lesser willing to sacrifice your commodity B to eventually purchase one additional quantity of good A. Okay. Now let's move to this diagram so as to make things a little more clear. Now as I said before, indifference curve is a combination or various combinations of two goods which will derive the same amount of satisfaction or same amount of utility to a consumer. So over here we have an indifference curve. So over here we have good A on X axis and good B on Y axis. Y axis, right? And we have all the points. So let's name the points 1 and 12 which is 1 and 12 will get us combination A then 2 and 8 gives us combination B, 3 and uh, over here 5 gives us combination C, 4 and 3 gives us D and finally we have E combination. Let me cut it properly. Alright. So now we know all these combinations and the indifference curve by joining all these combinations. So indifference curve by the definition is the combination of two goods giving equal amount of satisfaction or equal amount of utility to the consumer at any point on this indifference curve. So on any point the uh, combination of two goods will derive the same amount of utility to the consumer. Now why we are talking about the marginal rate of substitution? So as we have done the ratio before that is B to A. We're going to do the same thing in the graph as well. So this is change in B, change, this is delta. So change in B upon change in A. The same thing that we have done over here. Change in B upon change in A, right? So I am making this like a triangle so that you uh, get a clear idea of how marginal rate of substitution is declining gradually. Okay. So this is again change in B to change in A and finally change in B to change in A. I'm sorry. Okay. I think that's a little alright. Okay, so the vertical axis is change in B, that is Y axis, and the horizontal ax, uh, the horizontal line is the uh, parallel to the horizontal axis, which shows the change in good A. So you can see that for every additional unit of A that we want to purchase, we are willing to sacrifice less and less and less amount of good B. So uh, this shows that the marginal rate of substitution, which means the rate at which we want to substitute good A to good B is going or is declining, right, is decreasing. And that is what is shown in this diagram, alright. So, over here, we can also write MRS is equal to change in B upon change in A. Uh, here you can always write change in y upon change in x which is the names of the axis. I have taken two goods which are named a and b and that is why I am showing this as change in b upon change in a. And this will always decline. Now uh, we have done a major concept of marginal rate of substitution uh, in the indifference curve theory which is also one major property of indifference curves. So now let's move on to different properties of indifference curves. Let me quickly erase this and we'll quickly now move on to the different properties of indifference curves. 
there are majorly five uh, properties of interference curves and if you understand the theory of marginal rate of substitution then moreover the work is done and then we can al always proceed to the next properties so let's uh, take the first property all right now the first property let's make this a little more specific all right now the first property of interference curve says that interference curve are always downward sloping to the right downward sloping to the right so now what we saw earlier in the uh, that we uh, drew from the schedule was an interference curve which was downward sloping to the right right, right? so this means that we are substituting one good for the other any curve which is downward sloping in a graph will always show some amount of substitution that is taking place substitution means that for purchasing or for getting one additional unit of uh, a commodity a we need to sacrifice another units uh, the units of commodity D, commodity b and that is why the slope of interference curve is downward sloping to the right so um okay the first property would say that slope of interference curve is downwards which means that interference curve will slope downwards to the right and this is how it will be done uh, let's uh, let's graphically explain it also for example if this is a point and this is a point so over here we take a and a1 and over here we take b and b1 right so now you can see clearly that for an additional for an additional unit of good a we need to decrease or sacrifice some units of good b which shows the substitution right and that is why it is uh, the interference curve is always declining uh, to the right now let's do the second property the second property has been explained to you through the schedule which is with regard to the marginal rate of substitution now let's check what is the property interference curve uh, the property is interference curve is convex to the origin interference curve is convex to the origin convex means this right and concave means this okay so we are dealing with interference curves being convex to the origin now why is it convex to the origin it is because of the marginal rate of substitution which is declining which is declining and which is why we are not willing to sacrifice more and more units of good b for an additional unit of good a as we have already seen earlier and which is why marginal rate of substitution is declining or decreasing whenever marginal rate of substitution will decline or decrease every time a curve will be convex to the origin right so again you will have this sort of curve which will be convex to the origin now let's move on to the third property of interference curves the third property of interference curve suggests that interference curves okay let's let's take it like this higher the interference curve higher the interference curve higher oops higher the satisfaction so 
so we are dealing with indifference curve analysis which is ordinal utility analysis so that is why the satisfaction uh, is something which we are dealing in satisfaction of consumers by consuming um, certain commodities now indifference curve analysis says that higher the indifference curve higher the satisfaction now let's make quickly a few indifference curves on a graph Right, so this will be IC1 and then IC2 and then IC3. Indifference curve 1, 2 and 3 on x-axis, y-axis origin. Right. So um, just quickly you can note that where, whenever there's a um, combination of various indifference curves on a graph, it is known as indifference curve map, Okay, which shows various indifference curves on the same graph. Okay. So quickly now, let's come to the property. Higher the indifference curve, higher the satisfaction. Okay, so it will also mean that the more the indifference curve will be um, uh, with the two axes, or it will be uh, um, you know closer to diff both the axes, it will be dealing or deriving lesser amount of utility than the indifference curve which will be farther away from the axis. That indifference curve which will be farther away from the axis will give the consumer more amount of utility than of course this one. So if uh, I want to just make it more clear. Now let's keep one good constant. Okay, so over here I have taken good A on Y axis and good B on X axis. Okay, now on indifference curve 1, we can have OA combination of uh, com commodity A and OB amount of B, right? But at a higher indifference curve that is IC2, I can have uh, OA again amount of quantity A but I can increase now my units of commodity B that I can consume more and that is why this will be the gap that has been filled by the indifference curve 2 which is giving me a higher amount of satisfaction or higher amount of utility. Again now it's very simple to understand if uh, for one, uh, what for once you were able to purchase a certain commodity and now you can purchase more amount of that commodity automatically you will be put on a higher amount of indifference curve which means that you are gaining higher level of satisfaction again yeah, here we are comparing it so it again deals and shows that this is ordinal utility concept where level of satisfaction is being compared okay so higher the indifference curve higher the level of satisfaction or utility now let's uh, because we know this property now we can jump on to the next property which is very um, very interesting to understand so let's see what the fourth property says now the fourth property says that indifference curves do not do not intersect each other intersect each other indifference curves do not intersect each other now uh, we saw an indifference curve map where we saw various indifference curves ic1 ic2 and ic3 but then how why cannot they intersect each other so let's let's intersect them at first so that we understand why is it prop why this property is true okay so let's uh, i'll make a graph and um, so this is x axis and y and origin and over here i'm drawing an indifference curve of one and then i'm intersecting it so this is my indifference curve two okay okay um is it it's uh, let let me make another indifference curve too because it's not that downward sloping so let let me stick to the property and 
let's make another one. Okay, this is more likely to be interference curve 2. Alright, now let's, let me take the blue marker to make some points. This is point A, this is point B and this should be point C. Alright, now in the previous property we learned that higher the interference curve, higher the level of satisfaction. So from this diagram we can say that A uh, is, uh, or I'll, oh sorry, I'll write it over here so that you understand clearly. Okay, so point A should be at a lesser utility level than point B, of course, because point A is on interference curve 1 and B is on interference curve 2. And because we know that higher the interference curve, higher the level of satisfaction. So we can easily say that level of satisfaction at B is more than A. Now, because we have intersected these two interference curves, there is a point C as well on IC2. Now, if I make a point D on IC1, now let's only see point C and D. Now, when we see points C and D, we say that point C, point C is on IC2 and point D is on IC1, which means that point C should give us more amount of satisfaction than D. But over here, we have already seen that point B is on IC2, which gives us more amount of satisfaction. So over here, we are, our property is proving right that IC curves do not intersect each other. Because as soon as the interference curves was, would intersect each other, the previous property, that is higher the interference curve, higher the satisfaction, will prove wrong. And so, because it is a property, it can never prove wrong. And that is why this thing will never happen. Okay. So, we can, um, we can erase any one of the inference curves. So, let me erase IC2. Um, okay. And I'll make this IC2 without intersecting. Okay, and then whatever the point B, now the property is proved right. And if I say over here C and D, again D will be uh, giving more level of satisfaction than point C. So now over here the property will prove right. And that is why we now know that interface curves would not intersect each other. Alright, so property third and property fourth are actually interlinked so you can learn it easily and let's now do the final property which is fifth property